Okay, the first part is the visual drill. This is where we use flashcards. We have flashcards with the alphabet, the first, the first letters of the alphabet. I, um, normally we provide flashcards at the workshop as well. We made a conscious de decision not to do that this time and for a reason. Each child that I work with has their own set of flashcards because each one is at a different place in these lessons. Right? If you have a group, like if you're an LST or you're doing small group instruction in some way, then you know, maybe the small group, it's easier to, to get a few that are around the same and you can have the same flashcards for that group. But to give them all the sounds at once, they're gonna feel like they're failing. We have to make sure that the flashcards we present are always exactly what they know. So when I start with a new child, I would put, you know, write out the alphabet. I would have them work with me. Okay, what's the first letter? Do you know your vowels? And I'd write the vowels down on individual cards. And then I would go through and we'd go through all the consonants. I would have them see if they can put the cards in order. Because a lot of times that's just something that you need to work on to have them putting the alphabet in order and knowing it from you know, beginning to end. And that LMNO is not one word or one letter. <laughs> that kind of thing. So we go through that and then when we're done we have all the sounds that they know and I put them on a little binder clip. Like those, just those round clips that you can get, and punch holes in them, and then that's their set of cards. And then we add to them with each progressive lesson. So as we learn a new sound, we add that sound to the ring. So if a mistake is made, we put the card at the back. So if you can imagine just taking your flashcards, and they're saying the sound to you in the visual drill. You're presenting them with the letter, so they see the letter A, and they say, ah. And I go like this because it's natural. For each of the vowels, we have a little visual cue that's a very easy visual cue. For apple, we say, oh, there's a big, huge, shiny red apple in my hand. Ah, apple, right? And that's only at the beginning, and eventually we take away that visual cue. So, ah for apple, i for itchy, uh for up, ah for o, oh, and e is eh. They need to know that they're, the shape that their mouth makes when they say eh. That's usually one of the most difficult ones. So it's eh. So they go through and we make, if they're not getting it, if they see the letter E and they don't automatically say it, we do the visual and they get it. They usually get it. And we go through those. So we go through the cards like that. Another one is X. We make it like you're opening a pop can, like that, and they, they get it that way. It's actually a pretty they, that's a pretty quick one. They usually get the more difficult ones that way. So we'll go through the whole deck. If they, if they make a mistake, like, you know, if or eh, then we just put that one in the back. They do catch on that you're doing that. <laughs> and sometimes they might get upset. If, they, if they're the type of child that gets upset about that, I don't do it. It's, it's just about making them feel good about learning the letters. Sometimes they're good with it, sometimes they're not. Usually they're okay with it and they, they think, oh, they might go, oh, darn, you know, kind of thing. But they'll go through and do it again. If, eh, ah, there's two O's, ah, cook, go, e, ch, huh. Now, there's a couple of sounds that are trickier, and let me move over here, sorry. And what they are are the ones that have soft sounds and hard sounds. C, you're always going to have them do the hard sound first. Teach them the hard sound because there's a reason why it makes a soft sound, and we'll teach that rule in one of our lessons. So if they see C, they don't say K and S until they learn that it makes us sound as well. 